as promised, uh, here is that short demonstration of how to get Anaconda uh, going on Windows as well, because we'll do all of the episodes in this tutorial we'll do using the IPython notebook as shipped as part of Anaconda. So in the previous part, I showed you how to do this in Linux, and now I will show you very briefly uh, to do the same to get IPython notebook and Anaconda running on Windows. Um, so it comes down to downloading a Windows installer. I'm running this in a, inside a virtual box uh, Windows 7 32-bit. So I chose uh, this package over here of 244 megabytes. And then as per usual, you get the EXE installer over there, which I installed. Unfortunately, you need administrator rights, but I assume you have that uh, being on Windows. And I chose defaults. So I installed it uh, in the Anaconda subdirectory of the C drive. And then I also allowed it to add that to my system path. These were all defaults. I've done this uh, before the screencast because it took, well, at least five or six minutes and it makes no sense to watch that happening. Okay, so once you've installed that, you go uh, and uh, open up a terminal program. So I'm just uh, going to the start menu and I type CMD. This is my terminal. And then I go to the Anaconda directory. Um, I think for convenience sake, uh, it makes sense to work in this directory, but you can work anywhere. Uh, this is, uh, it's added to the path, so you can start IPython notebook from anywhere, but the default notebook save path will be the startup directory. And in this case, I've chosen Anaconda to keep everything nice and together. You could, for example, also go into your own uh, home directory into users, username, documents, or just users username. But let's do it over here. So I go IPython notebook. It's added Anaconda scripts to my path. So when I do this, it'll be running IPython from the Anaconda scripts directory. It takes a while. And then um, you'll see back here, it started up the IPython notebook server, just like it did in Linux. And now this looks exactly the same. So I get this, uh, this notebook page over here. I can create a new notebook just like I did uh, on Linux. I won't demonstrate everything. And now I can start typing Python code. Something interesting, yesterday we did this. So that's Python 2.7 style. We'll be using Python 2.7 for these tutorials, but the code we'll be writing will be usable both in Python 3.3 or Python 2.7. So we're just doing the basics. But there is this important difference that in Python 3, print has become a function. And to make Python 2.7 behave the same way, what I'll do here is I'll just uh, insert a cell above, or I could have done control M A for above, and I'll do um, from future import print function and control enter to execute. Now, when I try to execute this 2.7 style print, it'll give me an error because it's not a function. So I've in effect told Python here, Python 2.7, please behave more like you will behave in the future in terms of the print function. And now I can do that. And I think that's what, that'll be the default for our tutorials to get you used to this Python 3 way of doing things. And wherever that's relevant, I'll point out more differences between 2.7 and 3.3. But the bottom line is that following you know, the basics of this tutorial, you'll be able to use what you learn both in Python 2.7 and 3.3. Just to repeat our uh, experiment, uh, uh, that I did in the tutorial on uh, part one on Linux, we'll make a function. Your name is, and then I can just add any parameters with commas or any variables. So let's just press shift enter. Now that function has been defined. And I can invoke it like that. So what's happening over here is that it's taking this string and then it's calling the function with that string as the parameter. Inside of the function, that string is bound to the name name. So inside of this function, when I refer to name, Python will replace that with this parameter. Just to show you that that's generic. Let's choose another name. So you can see I'm using the same function and I can also now go and modify it slightly.
I'm adding a third line. So what's happened here is this function in Python is an object and it has the name hello world. And when I call hello world, it'll look up the definition of this object, but I've redefined it now. So now I can go back down and say, let's just re-execute this cell. So I'm gonna press control enter and you'll see that now the output looks different because it went and looked up that object again with the name hello world. It found this function and it executed it with my parameter like that. This is also part of the power of IPython notebook is that uh, it's a very natural way for me to go back, change functions, and then go down again and re-execute them. Um, uh, it saves this whole kind of train of thought, this whole process that I've done, and I can always get it back. So let's just file save. And as you will have seen in the Linux tutorial, I can stop the whole process and tomorrow start up the IPython notebook in the same directory. And then I can just go and I will see that notebook listed here. So I can just click on part one and I'll get my notebook back. Okay, so that was uh, part two of this series, just showing how you can install Anaconda on Windows and get the IPython notebook going. Uh, from here on onwards, everything will be the same. I'll be using Linux for the demos, but you'll be able to repeat everything I do because you have IPython notebook running wherever you are on Linux or Windows or even Mac OS. Um, there was one other thing. Oh yes, the distinction between Python 2.7 and 3.3. I'll point out these differences when they occur, but you can assume that whatever we do in these tutorials will be usable also in Python 3.3. Um, and we'll do that by using these kinds of compatibility functions to make the IPython notebook uh, or this Python 2.7 look more like Python 3.3. The reason that we're not just using Python 3.3 is because that's not yet um, a part of the Anaconda distributions. So Anaconda has IPython for 3.3, but it doesn't have the IPython notebook for 3.3. And this is a really important component of this, um, of this learning process is using the notebook. Okay, so that was it for part two. Um, uh, part three should be out within the next uh, few days and we'll be looking at variables and possibly some control flow. Thank you very much for listening.